don't need a catastrophe to turn over a new leaf and change your life. You can start today. As a teen, Bill Purvis was viciously attacked and left for dead. Clinging to life, he cried out to Jesus and his life was miraculously saved. Bill's dramatic transformation resulted in an undeniable love for God and an urgency to tell others about Jesus. For over 30 years, Bill and his wife Debbie have pastored Cascade Hills Church in Columbus, Georgia. His ministry extends to an international television audience through his program, Real Time. Please give a warm welcome to Pastor Bill Purvis. Hey Bill, welcome back, man. It's good to have you. Great to see you, Leon. Glad to be with you again. We are talking today about this book that is just coming out called Make a Break for It. Now, you and I have talked once already. We did a program yes. together, yeah. and you have the craziest testimony yeah, about being stabbed three times. Yeah. And, and each of those stabs at 17 years of age is what we would consider in the emergency wards as life threatening. It right. should have killed a you. A mortal wound. That's right. Yeah. And God spared your life. Yeah. And you're pastoring today, a thriving, growing church, it's, family. Yeah. God's blessing yeah, and favor right. on it, our lives. It's an amazing story that, that I give God all the credit for. I, yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. I had never knew the moment that I invited Jesus into my life on my deathbed. I never knew that by asking him into my life that all of this would unfold. Wow. That I'd marry a beautiful wife. I'd have three great kids. That I'd have six grandkids. That I'd have the friends and relationships. The church would be where it is that I would even pastor a church. I was the last guy. People used to see me. I, I used to say back then, Leon, I'd, I'd see a friend that I didn't go to church. I wasn't yep. raised in one. I'd say, give me a dollar and I'll pay you back next time I see you in church. And they'd say, and there goes that dollar. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet I look at all that that happened just by meeting Jesus. So now, what a difference. In your book, you talk about this. And the first thing I want to, as we unpack some of these thoughts, is you call it second life. What yeah. do you mean by that? Yeah. Well, it's the, it's, the, it's the life that comes now when you find Christ. I thought I was living before. You know, I thought I was living before I knew God. And, and back then, you know, every time I saw a blue light in the back, you know, behind me, you know, I was, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Now, the only thing I do if I see one is say, is my seatbelt on. You know? yeah. and so, it's, it's that the conscience is clear. The life is free. Everything Jesus said, you would have rest. You would have peace. Everything he promised, I found, and that really is the real life. That's the abundant yeah. life. Yeah, and you know, I don't know why, but especially in America and Canada, it's like television movies. They've gotten good at making it look as if the Christian life is not a great life. Oh, yeah, yeah. God's, but they're so wrong. Yeah, God, God saved me, but he didn't take away my fun. You know exactly. I mean? Yeah, I laugh more now, and the conscience is clear, and really there are things you can laugh at that are, that are really enjoyable. Uh, yeah. You're blessed. I'll go to a party with friends uh, now, maybe friends who don't know Christ, but and I'll pop in there and they, they think I need drinks or yeah. drugs, and I'll be the life of the party uh, without any of yes. it. Because there's a joy that we've got. I can relate. I take a group of guys once a year, I'll take a different group of guys, and we go fishing, deep sea fishing. And most of them I, I want are unchurched, unsaved <laughs> people, don't even know God. Yep. One year I was with some guys, and they loaded all their liquor in, so we're out there fishing. And one of them started throwing up, and he's just throwing up on the side of the boat. And he turned around and said, Bill, it don't get no better than this, does it? <laughs> yeah, it gets a lot better. <laughs> it gets a lot better. That's right. That's right. All right, let's talk a little bit about liberty and breaking free. Because yeah. there's a liberty to this guy who's addicted to alcohol yeah. or others. Once you give your life to Christ, are yeah. you empowered to walk that you out? You really are. You really are. You find that God begins to, and it's really the issue of this. It's kind of like the guy that said one time he had two dogs and they would fight. And somebody said, which one wins the fight? He said, the one I feed the most. <laughs> and, and the more I can take in the word, the more I can be among Christians, the more I can receive the, the word and, and fellowship and, and prayer, the more I can do that, the, the more my new man, my new nature becomes stronger. So he's able to get the victory. I find when you lose the battles or when you're weak in your faith, it's because we've neglected that. Yeah. And so that's the key to it. That is so true. I found that when, without God's word, and and when I talk about reading God's Word, because some people read the Bible, yeah. and it's like all they can see is they have to do more, do more, do oh, yeah. more, do yeah. more. And I think that's a recipe for disaster, it where it's just guilt and condemnation. Yes. But when you realize that righteousness is a gift yes. from Jesus. Yes, that's right. That's and right. that He just gives you this free yeah, life. Right. It's like you didn't even earn didn't. this thing. That's right. That's my focus so much of the time. Yes. Do you find the same? I, absolutely. And, and it causes you when you recognize that you're accepted. You don't have to do anything to be accepted. Yeah. That changes the game. That when I realize God loves, because you always want to earn your way. You, you know, you want to you want to do something to prove that yeah. that you're worthy of being loved, and you don't have to be. The cross did that for us. You know, in our services, and I know you guys are the same, but we have this little 
a thing that every leader says <clears throat> when they welcome guests. They say, yeah. the culture of our church is laugh, L-A-F. Yeah. And L is to learn to love and value people. Right. A is to accept people the way they are, as messed yes, up or as perfect, right. whichever they think that's they are. Right. And as you give your life to Christ and you begin to serve Him, you, have, you actually have to go back to that, that you need to continue to see God's power changing you, your yes. habits, your thinking, that's get right. free from all the sin that so easily besets you, yeah. but to continually know He is yeah. absolutely in love with you even during that process. Exactly. I find I got to go back there all the time and see that. Yeah, we do. And, and it's sometimes we even tell other people, we say, this is the way God sees them. <clears throat> we got to remember that that's the way God sees us too. Yeah. He loves us. Sometimes we have a tendency in religious world, they'll say, well, that man's a drunkard. No, in God's eyes, that drunkard's a man. And, and oh, so, that's good. Yeah, and, and it's a way of seeing people through God's eyes and realizing we're, we're not for the grace of God, all of us would be in a mess. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you were, like, you, you told your story in the last show, and you got to go back and get see that, but you're hugging onto that lamppost. Yes. You're bleeding yes. out from three yeah. mortal wounds. Yes. God looked and saw your heart, oh, and yeah. He saw you down the road oh. pastoring His people for He him, did. And he Let saved me tell you about life. that lamppost, too. A miracle okay. again. Leon, this is one of the craziest things, but one of the, again, a favor of God. When I hung onto that lamppost and I prayed and asked Jesus in my life, He not only saved me and changed me then, but every year, on that same day, April the 28th, I would go back to that lamppost and I would spend some time praying there. I would touch it, kneel down, out in public, in a parking lot, and I would thank God for what He did. I remember the stories of the ten lepers and nine kept going, but one turned around and mm. said, thank you. Well, one day, about two years ago, a hospital in town bought that, that whole parking lot and they were demolishing all of it. And in their board meeting, somebody said, for some reason that pastor of that big church over there always comes over there and praise at that pole. And so the CEO called me and said, well, Bill, we're tearing it down. What's the story of the pole? And I told him. Wow. He said, would you like to have it? I said, sure. I called my wife and said, hey, I'm bringing the place I got saved home. <laughs> she said, what are you going to do with it? I said, I don't know. Well, I told the church the next week, a dozen construction men in our church said, Pastor, we'll build a prayer garden. They built a prayer garden on our church property, beautiful, wow. with that pole in the center of it. It's got a little inscription that says, uh, on April 28, 1974, our pastor in desperation cried out to God for a miracle, and he got it. Our hope is that as you are here today, that your miracle, God will answer as well as you're desperate for him. And so we've oh, used that. Oh, that's an incredible story. Yeah. And I'll tell you what's crazy. I would go back to that poll. I mean, that's 33 years. One time I was in Dallas, Texas speaking, and that day was April 28th. So I got a flight back to Atlanta, then another one back to Columbus, got a taxi to take me to that poll to that parking lot. I knelt and prayed, then got back in the car, went back to, the, to Atlanta, back to Dallas, spoke that night. Even the taxi driver said, you came all the way back from Dallas just to pray at that poll? I said, yeah, but here's the story of it. And, and I just feel like when people will remember where they came from, God will take them where they've never seen. You know, when you go back to that poll, like when you were hanging on, did you realize you were dying? Like was yeah. there fear yeah. all just, well, what was that I did. feeling like? I, I, I quit, in fact, what was crazy about it was, I had been with a friend years ago in high school that he'd been stabbed one time with an ice pick in one place and died. So I knew I was going to die. I, I knew it. And if I had died that night, even though God saved me, the world would have never known it. They would have always just thought, well, that boy's in the wrong place at the wrong time with a prostitute. So, he, you know, he deserved that or that's what he got. Jesus saved me to tell the world that he saves people like that. And yeah. so, but I did. I knew I was dying. And, and had that witness not told me everything I was looking for could be found in Jesus, I, I know I probably wouldn't have known what to do or, or where to turn. You know, so many people look at the church as when they say the lighthouse for the world, yeah. I hear that term, they mean that we should be an example of having it all together mm -hmm. so people can come in and see this yeah. is the way you should live your life. Yeah. You know, that has turned off more people it than has. we can imagine. Yes. It ought to be a place filled with messed up people. Oh who are on this journey somewhere yeah. discovering yes. Jesus so that everybody that walks by goes, I think I could fit in here. <laughs> That's exactly. In our church, I had a man make a comment one time. He walked in and he looked around and he said, man, this looks like the who's who of sinners. <laughs> so, and, you know, Compliment. I, yeah, I used to party with these people. Look at them now. You know, and, yeah. and that's what it does. It changes their life. Let's take a break right here. When we come back, let's unpack some more of, because every chapter in this book, you are helping people to move to this next season for Good. them. And so we'll keep going. I look forward to it. I'll be right back with Bill Purdy. 
some of those problems are your defining moments in life. So you true. look back at your life and say, there are times that I made radical changes or my life is, is wiser today or I'm, I'm, my values were changed. It was usually the problem that did it. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. Church. God created church for you to have a home, a family, and a purpose. It's a place where we can connect with each other, where everyone should find love, acceptance, and forgiveness. But the church is not a building. It isn't the brick, the doors, stained glass, or the steeples. It's the people. We fill it with life and laughter. We are the church, and we can meet online from anywhere in the world. Let's connect at Springs Online today. Welcome back. My guest today is Bill Purvis, who wrote this book, Make a break for it. It'll take you and it guide you and then strengthen you to go to that next season that's been waiting for you. Maybe you've been afraid to take that break. Yeah. No, we were talking, Bill, a little bit about some of the chapters yeah. that are in here. And I just went through it and wrote some of them down. Yeah. In one of the chapters, you talk about dressing for destiny. Oh, yeah. What yeah. do you mean by one that? Of okay. You got up this morning. I got up this morning. We went to our closet. We yeah. found our clothes. We put on what we wanted to wear. Same thing ought to be spiritually. We ought to go to the prayer closet. Matthew 6, 6 says this. It says, if you will go to your closet, shut the door, and you begin to make your request, get dressed before God, he said, then your Father will reward you openly. He sees in secret. So this morning, I did the same thing. In the hotel room before I came over, I dressed this morning spiritually. I prayed, God, anoint me today with wisdom. I'm not asking for tomorrow. I need it today. It's the bread I need today. Anoint me today with the love for, for Leon. I said, help me to love him like you love him. Anoint me today for the audience that he's speaking to. Anoint me today with wisdom. And, and I just prayed all those things. I prayed mm -hmm. for anointing, for protection and provision and all those things. And so it's so natural when you have the peace of God because you're getting dressed spiritually. Yep. You know, you wouldn't go out your door without your clothes on. No. And yet, the, the, and, and the truth is, is a lot of people jump up and run out to solve their problems that day without <laughs> even getting dressed. And yeah. if you're spiritually dressed, I think you'll find yourself in a place where you say, I'm more prepared than I thought I was for the conditions around me. That is so true. I find that I've got to keep reminding myself. Yeah. Because you end up going out like the Bible talks about the flesh. It just you end up going in your own strength. Yeah. You end up yeah. going out in your own wisdom. That's right. And we have access to everything that Jesus That's right. has. That's right. The more the more we rely on the flesh, the more we feel the stress, you know. Yeah. And and the more we rely on on Christ and and just surrender to him and seek him in the morning, the easier it is throughout the day. Not that there won't be problems, but you'll have wisdom when it comes. 
Yeah, when, because when the problems do arise, because people think, some people think that when you give your life to Christ, that now your life becomes problem free. Oh, yeah, yeah. But no, I just think that His power that resides within you, uh, I had one guy say that, you know, problems in life when you're a believer and you trust in God mm -hmm. is like going back in the slingshot of God. Yeah. Even if the enemy seems to be pushing you backwards and you're not yeah. making new territory, That's right. you, you just keep trusting God because at some right. point it gets let go and you just catapult forward. Exactly. exactly. And some of those problems are your defining moments in life. So you true. look back at your life and say, there are times that I made radical changes or my life is, is wiser today or I'm, I'm, my values were changed. It was usually the problem that did it. You know, yeah. blessings sometimes don't change us. They, they make us grateful, but the problems make a change. Yeah, you're right. We look at something and we have to rise up. Or, yeah. And we have to let the Jesus in us That's right. rise up. It's maybe even That's a right. better way to put it. That's right. You talk as well about envisioning your future. Yeah. Why is that important yeah. for change? I don't think you'll get somewhere if you don't kind of see it. You got to have a target or sign or something in front. I think God gives you the vision. The many things that God puts in your mind, puts in your spirit, puts in your heart, and sometimes that dream He puts there, we think, well, I can never achieve that. Or we'll do the opposite of that. We'll just say, uh, I'm going to run out and do it right now in my flesh. I think the key is going to be getting it, accepting it, and saying, if God, if that's for me, you confirm it. You just show me. I'm willing. And being willing, it's kind of like a church I spoke at one time. It was an African-American church, and the pastor said, now, Brother Bill's going to speak. And he said, and you, you want to go ahead and say your part right now. And all over the building, one by one, people would sit up and say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, until everybody in that congregation was saying, yes, Lord. And then he turned around and said, now, let's pray. He said, Lord, we've already made our decision. We're going to say yes. We just need to hear your assignment. And, wow. and I think that's, that's a lot of the envisioning is, God, I'm willing to do what you want me to do. Yeah. I, and and I, I will trust you. Yeah. Now, I'm willing you show me. And then be a, attentive and alert. And let God lead you. And when you do, you'll, you'll find yourself in the place. You know, I find that <clears throat> the language that God speaks is usually dreams and visions. It's, yeah. it's this ability to look ahead because your brain's always trying to figure out how. Yeah. But God is just saying, just see it. That's right. And He'll connect the dots That's for right. us. He'll actually attract the right people to us. That's right. He'll actually give us the resources we need. How many times That's as a right. pastor have you heard, you don't have the money? Well, money is attracted to vision. It is. Yes, it is. It sure is. And it's also this. I, I've had sometimes a big giver that would say, I'm going to leave. You're going to miss my money. And God would bring somebody I never knew, and they'd just write a check. Say, I love what God's doing here. And they'll write yep. a check and be three times more than what that would be. <laughs> I'd be saying, I wish they left earlier. <laughs> and, and, but you remember, Nehemiah did that. He went around the walls that night, and it says, I didn't tell anybody at the moment what God put in my heart. They weren't ready yet, and he didn't put it in everybody's heart. He put it in Nehemiah's first. And God's going to put the vision in the leader's heart first. And when he puts that vision there, you've got to be willing to say, Lord, if this is your vision, then I'm willing to walk in this way. And then you, you start sharing it, they'll start confirming it. Yeah. And you'll find people start buying in and believing and wanting it. And that to use the affirmation that, hey, I'm not alone in this. That's true. You know, sometimes a lot of people that will stop me as we're walking the halls in between services and they'll say something like, Pastor, I just love your vision. Yeah. And I'll just stop and say, I, I'm hoping that you'll love it enough to make it yours. <laughs> That's right. So that it's That's right. our vision. When it becomes theirs. Because it is a godly vision. It, it is. It's not a matter, it's Leon's. No. Yeah. It's something God's dropped into our lives as a team yes. for the city that we live in that's and right. to the uttermost parts of the that's world. Right. And that's when a, a team begins to work in a phenomenal way, when we all own this Exactly, vision. exactly. Yeah. I, I'm near a, a military base, Fort Benning, Georgia, and every now and then they'll bring a, a general there and he oversees that base. I had a general tell me one time, he said, I don't worry about all the other bases. I worry about my base. That's my assignment. And I thought that as, as pastors mm. and as leaders and all yeah. of us, you know, for a father, your assignment is your home. For a mother, your assignment is your family. For a, for a pastor, your assignment is your church. You don't have to worry about everybody else. Just follow your assignment. Be faithful where you are. You answer to Him. Amen. And just do the best you can where you are. And God won't leave you where you are. He'll usually increase what you have. Talk to me about fear, because you talk about that in the book. Yeah. Faith or fear. Like we, yeah. we have to make this choice, don't exactly, we? Exactly, exactly. And fear is the thing I think everybody battles. I think that's the common thing. Is yeah. The fear is, will I be accepted? Will I be rejected? Will this work? Well, I look like a fool. I mean, look at everybody God ever blessed, especially those that he has to take big steps. They were ridiculed. You know, whether it be a Noah, no matter who it was, they were ridiculed. You know, how are you going to do this? A Nehemiah? And yet, the issue is, if I can conquer the fear, and the only way you really conquer fear is by faith. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you're going to suppress it and annihilate it. And if you give in to fear, fear will take you through a maze. 
it, you'll, you'll not get out. You'll get fearful of this and fearful of that and things that would so never make true. you afraid. You just keep going down. That's I've never heard it put that way. Fear is like putting you in a maze. Yes. You never get out. No, no. And everything starts falling apart. And then you panic and then you stress. It becomes a cycle. And the issue with faith is realizing God's bigger than that. You ever seen somebody when they look down in a maze and they can say, walk to the left, walk to the right. Well, that's, when you're walking by faith, you're realizing it doesn't matter what the path is. The one above me is guiding my steps. You know, the story you shared about hanging on to that, that, that post yeah. and giving your life to Christ. We, before we were ever called Christians, yeah. we were called believers. That's right. Yes. And that's really what that's faith word, is. Too. It's believing something yes. that you probably have no ability to do for exactly. yourself. You weren't about to save your life. You're going to no. kiss your life goodbye that's right. right there. That's right. But you called out to God and you made a choice. Okay, I'm putting myself in your hands. That's right. And from that point and on, everything that you do, you first, it's like you talk about, you got to dress yourself, you've yeah. got to create a vision, and now yeah. walk in that direction knowing only yeah. God. That's right. It is going to be able to connect That's right. these dots. That's right. And yeah. believing, it doesn't have to be big belief to start with. It'll grow into that. Yes. You, been, you start believing, you're trying to believe and get that place. The more you start relying on God, then that belief becomes so big, it's a, you're convinced. Yes. But we do believe everywhere else. I don't know why it's hard in the spiritual life. You know, I, I sat in this chair. I didn't check the bottom of it to see was it going to hold up. It's um, true. I went to see a doctor the other day, and he gave me this gown that doesn't have a back, you know. <laughs> now, now I know, those. Yeah, now, now I know why they call that unit ICU. You know? <laughs> and so, but, but uh, you know, he says, walk down the hallway and do so-and-so. And, so, and I'm, I'm thinking, how do I know he's a doctor? Is he really a doctor? What, what if he's posing and he's not a real doctor? You know, and here yeah. I am. And we believe in everything, and yet it's so hard sometimes to believe the one who obviously so has signs good. of his creations everywhere around us. Yeah, you know, people often say, I have a hard time believing in God. And yeah. I think of analogies just like that. I think I get on a plane, I go above the clouds. Yeah. I haven't got a hot clue where he's taking me. That's right. It could be Africa for yeah. all I know. Yeah. But I'm trusting the guy in the front, and I can't even trust God. That's right. But I'm That's trusting right. that guy. And you're trusting he passed all his flight school exams. <laughs> yeah, he didn't walk on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, we got about a minute left. Close and just maybe pray with folks that are, yeah. have been listening and, uh, and, and they're just resonating with this testimony and yeah. this desire to start breaking free. Yes. Would you pray with them? I sure would. Love to right now. Father, I come in the name and through the blood yes, of Jesus, Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that you're a God that knows every need we have and that you have a plan for every life. Mm. I pray that today, Lord, that this would be the day that they would make breaks for it. That today there would be someone today listening that would say, you know, I'm tired of where I am and I want to know that this God who's made a plan for their lives has one for mine. Lord, I pray that you would quietly and gently whisper in their spirit that you love Praise them so you, much. Yes, that you have a destiny for them. You have a direction for them. And you have power to help them to achieve it. And Father, I pray that today they would just as a little child turn their heart over to you and say, Lord, take my life and use it for your glory. Make my life what you intended it to be the day you created me. I surrender my life to you today. And I pray that today they would pray that prayer and pray it in faith knowing when they say amen to that prayer, that they would suddenly see new things around them yes, begin to Jesus. open up and a direction for them that they should walk in. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Wow, Bill, thank you for being with me today. Thank you, Leon. This has been just my great. My honor, my <laughs> honor. If you've been watching and enjoying our conversation, here's what you need to do. This book, make a break for it. It'll guide you through tested, proven things that'll inspire you and help you to break free from whatever's got you stuck and go on to the next season God's got for you. We'll be right back. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this spirit contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today.
What a great show today with Bill Purvis. Learning to change in today's fast-paced world is so valuable. That's what Spirit Contemporary is all about. You know, so many people have seen Christians on television and, and evangelists pointing their finger at the cameras, turn or burn, but there is a message that Jesus brought to us. And the message is a message of salvation, a message of grace. The fact that believers today are filled with the Spirit of God and that He will flow through us in gifts and abilities, His power helping us in everyday life from our career to our families to our marriage to doing great things for God through our churches. Spirit contemporary, spiritually alive. But then God wants us to be contemporary and cool. We ought to be able to fit into this world in such a way, no compromise, but in a way that we connect with people. Wherever Jesus went, people loved Him. They connected with Him and He was able to connect with them. You know, for a gift of $30 or more, you can be a, an integral part Part of getting this message out to the world, to those who don't know Christ. But you know, there's an entire group of believers out there who don't have a clue as to how to present this Jesus, how to walk in the power of the Spirit. And there is such an urgency in uh, my spirit to get this message out and to see those who don't know Christ one to Jesus and to see the church be trained in a way that makes them powerful at reaching their countries, their cities, for Christ. I want to encourage you to go to your phone now and for a gift of $30 or more, I'm going to send you a gift that's going to just train you and equip you even further in this area of being spirit contemporary, operating in the gifts of the Spirit, flowing, learning to sense God, but being able to connect with the people that God has all around you. Go to your phones right now. We would love to have you. Let's put names in the Lamb's Book of Life in heaven. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support, because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe. Your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. Tomorrow, Leon is joined by Dr. Suzanne Humphreys, who shares her research and knowledge on the controversial topic of vaccines. Where it was determined a long time ago by the health authorities that even well-founded arguments about vaccination should be suppressed.